we gotta get a lot of stuff done okay we need the productivity personality trait in my virgo star sign to come out i have a lot of work to do for school it's one of those weeks where it just like kind of piled up it didn't necessarily pile up because of procrastination like maybe like a little bit of procrastination like a tiny bit but realistically it was gonna be a little bit of an intense week regardless because i have a midterm tomorrow i also last minute found out that i have a quiz tomorrow as well in a different class so that technically is not my fault. I had no clue that I would be having two tests back to back on the same day. And then I have technically like 10 pages to write for another class. You know what? I'm not worried. I woke up early so that we could get everything checked off so that we're vibing. I also have to tackle my laundry real quick. My room is technically it's like kind of a cluttered mess right now but this isn't one of those okay we're focused on getting my schoolwork done and making sure that everything's on my p's and q's for my test cleaning my room is like not the priority in the productivity but my laundry is because i'm out of clothes and like i don't know how i let it get this far but i do know i think it was just because it was like too many weekends where i wasn't home to do my laundry we just gotta start because I have nothing, I have nothing to wear anymore. This is where we're at right now, where I had to make a secondary pile because we were no longer fitting in my actual hamper. So, immediate, immediately. about my laundry like I'm not a fanatic I'm just like very particular because I read every single tag and I feel like that might be more normal than I'm like making it seem but when I lived at home at my mom's house I never read the tags and there was something about like moving into an apartment and I don't know if it's like the closer proximity or that I'm like washing my laundry more often that I'm like, let me read the freaking tag. And realizing like I've been washing certain laundry on different settings. One thing, I do waste money on clothes by buying stuff and then never wearing it because I'll buy something. I'll be like, oh, that looks cute on her. And then it just never looks cute on me. And then I never go and return it. And then I waste money that way. But one thing I don't want to do is waste money by buying something. Like this is what? This is like a $60 sweatsuit? And then I'm the one that Fs it up just because I didn't read a silly little tag. So all that's to say, read your tags. Because each of these sweatsuits that I got, they all have to be turned inside out. I have to wash them on cold and then they can't be dried. I would never even check if things needed to be air dried. So I'm like, what? Like my stuff must have just been like shrinking and ruining, like I don't get it. It's time to stop dilly-dallying because I want to be out the house. I did say like 8.30 before, but it's like 8.15. So like realistically, if I could get out of the house for like 8.45, 9 the latest, that'll be good. I'm going to not a new cafe, but new to you guys. But I went there with my mom one time and I was like, this is such... I should do like a cafe ranking for New York City that like cafes that are good for like work from home because this one was so cute and I'm just hoping that I get a good seat because they have like bar stools by the window anyways and they have like multiple multiple outlets like there's so many criteria checkpoints 
for a good cafe to do work in because like you need good Wi-Fi, strong Wi-Fi, access to multiple outlets, a comfortable chair, and then good food. Like if, even if they have food, some cafes don't have food and then you're like, okay, now I gotta go somewhere else to eat, but this one has food. I didn't necessarily like their chai, but I feel like we could work with that. Like maybe I need to ask them to do something a little different, but everything except for the chai was 10 out of 10. I have two tests tomorrow, but the tests basically are both open note because they're both online, which is phenomenal. That's like one of the most amazing things that came out of the 2020 atrocities. Anniversary seems so weird because anniversary sounds like, anytime I hear anniversary, it sounds like a positive thing. But today is the four year anniversary of that really extended spring break. So crazy that like our last day of like normal society was literally Friday the 13th. Like we should have known. I remember I was supposed to do like a cheerleading event and then it got canceled and I was sad and then I was on the bus going home and that was the first time I saw a bunch of people wearing masks and I was like, y'all are crazy. It was the first day and I was like, what? This is so not normal. And then that entire weekend waiting to hear what was going to happen and they were like, oh, well like early spring break, we'll see you in two weeks. And then I never saw any of those people ever again. That's actually like, it. okay, yeah. If you remember your last day, Friday the 13th, 2020, please let me know, like, what were you doing? What was the vibes? Were you in school? Like, what was up with that? Also, I'm learning. So I knew that they like temporarily, I think like just took out the, AC, the SAT, like you didn't need an SAT to get into college just because of COVID. But now that it's back, they changed it. So like apparently the reading portion, I guess, is like now only paragraphs. High schoolers only have to read paragraphs and then do the reading section instead of like the weird ass stories that we had to, the weird ass stories, like the dumbest stuff that we had to read and then critical think about. The math section, you can now use Desmos, which like when I first heard that, I was like, I don't know what Desmos is, but then I looked up a TikTok and I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, it's basically like doing, like it's not doing the work for you, but it was like Desmos is what you would use in class when you learn functions. Like we would use Desmos in class and now they can use it as a, on the SAT with their calculator. I'm not mad because it makes sense because the test should evolve because realistically, if you're going into the real world, why would you not be able to use the internet platform that could do the math for you when if you're going into a career that requires math like like i don't think your employer would be like no you can't use desmos you know what i'm saying like no you can't use a calculator the sat should evolve but i'm just pissed that it didn't evolve when i was taking it because i feel like i could have done a good job but realistically it wouldn't have made a difference because i only applied to one college so i'm actually just not making sense right now and i'm just saying stupid stuff but if i did take it and i did apply to other colleges i feel like i would have you know i feel like i would have done better if like if the reading portion was just paragraphs because my sat score it wasn't bad it was i think it was just genuinely like average like it was just average like it was nothing exceptional it was not gonna get me into no ivy league that's for sure so like i was saying both of my tests are online so realistically what i have to do so my first test is for my principles of marketing class and it's a midterm so she said it's going to be between 50 to 55 questions um mainly multiple choice and true false some fill in the blank um she said like probably no short answer just because those are hard for her to grade so i'm like please please no short answer it's on the four chapters that we've done so far in the class the principles of marketing like textbook and the material it's all pretty straightforward but there are like you know specific terms and stuff like that i just need to make sure that i have so with that with open note tests that are online i prioritize just making sure i have organized notes 
and details from the textbook that I skimmed over when I first read them in like in a Google Doc document because then you could just command F your way through. I could show you guys that off. You guys probably know command F, but it's literally like a lifesaver. My second test is in black political identities in a transnational context. Every time I say that, like I need to like take a deep breath. But that was the one where he sprung it on us yesterday. Like literally five minutes after, like five minutes before class ended yesterday, he was like, oh yeah, yeah, like quiz on Thursday. We were all like, what? Like, what? What are we talking about? So, um, we have a quiz on Thursday. That one's only gonna be 10 questions, but his quizzes scare me because I don't know, like I only got an 80 on his quiz last time because if it's 10 questions, then like if you get two wrong, that's, that's an 80. If you get one wrong, that's a 90. So I got two wrong and I got an 80 and I was pissed because y'all know my self-validation that comes with me and my grades. And I feel like, I don't know, because like I pay attention in class. He was like, if you pay attention in class and you take good notes, then it'll be easy. But I'm like, C, 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 but I did that for the first test. I'm always paying attention. I take very thorough notes to the point where my, my finger hurts, to the point where my finger hurts. But sometimes I just don't understand how he words the questions. And they come off as like a trick question to me. But I feel like maybe I'm lacking critical thinking skills because I feel like maybe nobody else in the class thinks that they're tricky. But I'm like, sometimes like the way that he words the questions, I'm like, wait, but this isn't straightforward. I'm not getting this, I'm not understanding. Last thing, which isn't like, pressing but I should start it for my screenwriting class which is on Friday I am presenting my treatment which basically is like our second pitch so I don't know if I told you guys I probably did mention it but basically this screenwriting class is like a feature film screenwriting class so a few weeks ago we pitched our like our idea for our true film and that was meant to be like three pages I wrote like five just because like the ideas were flowing and I was like, okay, like, let me just get it down. So technically I'm like halfway there. So for the treatment, it has to be like five to 14 pages. That'll be due Friday, but not like Friday at 11.59, like Friday at 2.15 because I have to present it in class and like get feedback. Those are all my assignments. It's literally 9.30, so I have to go. It took me 30 minutes to try to pick an outfit and I landed on this, so I don't know why it took me 30 minutes to try to figure out this, but Target flared leggings, my Uggs, and then this quarter zip from White Fox. Uh, my undershirt is from my outfit online, and then my puffer jacket. It took me so long because, like, it's saying it's supposed to be 60 degrees today, but, like, I don't know. I'm forgetting, like, how 60 degrees feels, so I don't know if I'm going to be too cold or I don't know if I'm going to be too hot. So I was trying to go back and forth with that. I don't know, hopefully I'm not too hot with this because I'm like, I'm hot right now, but I'm hoping once I step outside, it'll be like perfect. Bro, it looks back. So oh God, it's packed. Because the exam was open no, I really wanted to focus on just making a full review package of all of the notes from all of the four chapters that we read. In our previous class, we did a whole review session where the teacher basically just went over all of the concepts, terms, and main points that we had to know. I had typed all of those up and basically what I was doing here was just going back into the textbook, making sure I had all of the definitions and all of the terms and transfer them basically into like this big 10 page 
review document on Google Docs and this did take longer than I expected it to just because I was being very thorough just to make sure. The reason I really enjoy open note tests, which most people do, you make a review package on Google Docs and then you make sure that like everything you need to know is in there. For Mac, it's Command F, but I don't know what it is for Windows, but basically it's just like Finder. So if you press Command F, you can search any term within the document that you want to find. So it's really simple. Like if you see a question and it's like, what is the definition of park? And then you just Command F, you search up park and it'll take you directly to where you put the definition in your review package. I basically spent like two hours writing all my notes from the textbook and like reading over the textbook. What a coincidence that I'm 10 steps away from Barnes & Noble's. I promise I will not purchase anything. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go browse. See what's going on there, you know? This special edition blood marked. This is so cute. So cute. We love you, blood marked. It's currently about to be 9 15 so I have 15 minutes until my marketing class I was a little worried originally because I knew that this test was gonna be online we don't have to be we like can't meet in the classroom we can't do anything like obviously we're not supposed to collaborate so I knew this one was gonna be online but then at first I thought that I was also gonna have to go in and meet for my second period class which is 10 minutes after this class so i figured i was gonna have to go to campus anyways and like take the test in the library and then go to my second class but now that my second class also has an exam that means that my second class is also online so basically i get to stay home until i could stay home for my first two classes and then i'll have to go into campus for my 215 computer class so that's a vibe that's why i'm like i had a slow morning realistically i woke up at like 8 30 and i was just chilling i don't have to get dressed yet i have 15 minutes on my test it's like i don't have to do any last minute studying because all of my notes are all organized i feel good about it like i feel like it's gonna be okay like i realistically wrote down all the notes you could possibly take i feel like i'm in good hands i didn't necessarily do any extra work on my notes for my black political studies class which i'm like Ugh. like yesterday when i came home I definitely I definitely was not in my productive mood I have the notes I, I feel like I took very thorough notes in the class itself I don't have enough time to like try to go through the readings and like take extra notes I'm still doing my laundry because as you saw there's lots of piles we'll see it's also nearly 70 degrees today which is like and I'm gonna be like inside doing schoolwork and then going to class so that kind of sucks but it's okay summer's around the corner and soon enough, school will be out and we can scream and shout.
had like 25 minutes left, but honestly, I already like double checked all of my work. I like to use as much time as possible, but it wasn't something where I need to triple check. Sometimes I get so anxious that like I triple check stuff, but this time I only needed to double check and I feel like I probably did well. So I have my paper marking for the stuff that I went back to and I'm pretty sure, so I calculated because I'm not enjoying how she's not giving us our grade immediately and she said she wouldn't do that because when she goes through the like test she's gonna see if there's like questions that over 80% of the class got wrong and if over 80% of the class gets like one particular question wrong then she's gonna like waive that question so she's not putting the final score on blackboard because normally like when you take a test on blackboard you can see your score right away which I enjoy because the concept of waiting for my grade is just I, I physically can't do it anymore so like I have to calculate it myself because I just can't wait because I'm just like that's just not that's just not okay so I kind of tried to calculate my score so it was a test with 50 questions and out of my when I went back to check there was four questions that I was like possibly so so about the lowest grade that i could have gotten was a uh, 46 out of 50 which is a 92 percent and then i'm my assumed grade because two of these that i was like so so were just like me thinking that i'm probably overthinking it i think i'm pretty right so i'm pretty sure i got two wrong but i put four just in case it's like you know so i could give myself a range so my assumed grade is a 96 so we'll have to see maybe i'll put i i don't think i'll get my grade back i definitely won't get my grade back by the time this video goes up because she's probably like there's a hundred people in that class like it's gonna take a while so maybe i'll remember to like put what grade i got in the comments if you guys care if you guys care if my assumed grade was the same um or maybe it's gonna be higher maybe it's higher like, we're really just going for an 100, obviously. Like, if I get an 100, that's amazing. But my assumed lowest is between a 92 and a 96. Now it's 10.35. I have my second class at 11. And normally he has class before we take the exam. So I do have to log on to Zoom at 11, take the class, and then he normally, like, dismisses us. And he's like, go take the quiz. So I have time to make some breakfast even though it's like a little bit early so i'm not like super hungry i think every test should be open note because realistically when i go into the real world the real world is open note in the real world everybody has a freaking phone where they could just look stuff up so i feel like all tests should be open note because nobody memorizes anything anymore nobody it's just it's obsolete it's obsolete i'm gonna make sure i have a good attendance so who else is here please announce yourself for a long time in peer scholars has argued that a lot of textbooks written ended the slave trade because it had been losing and was losing significantly it, it, enormous losses from this trade. African captives anymore were not demanding African captives anymore. They didn't even want more because they, 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 the, they, 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 the plantations had been saturated for quite a long time. Many of the plantations had been breeding. They were breeding, breeding, breeding African captives, breeding slaves. The United States people like Nat Turner also had the message, had about two so So I'll leave it open for the rest of the day, but as soon as you start, you know that the clock starts counting. Okay, but I encourage students to use this time since I'm here so that if you have any problem, you know, um, I'll be here to help you out to make sure that you get back in. I got ready. Because it's time to go to my next class. I have to stop at my mom's house and feed the cats. But I was just getting ready in my room and it's literally like it's 70 degrees. So I was like trying to figure out my outfit. I had my window open because it's hot. Guys, a huge ass bumblebee just flew in my room and I it's there. It's like on my bed. So I just closed my door. <laughs> But I have to go back in there to get my, like, all my stuff is in there. Like, that's my bed. Like, that's where I sleep. But, like, guys, it's, like, this big. I'm literally shaking. I'm literally shaking. I left the window open, so hopefully it knows to retreat. Like, my hand. <sighs> my hand I'm going to show you the fit in here, okay? Like I said, the weather is, like, it's, like, in that weird stage where I can't tell what i need to be wearing because i'm like it's 67 but like when that wind hits you all of a sudden it's cold and yesterday people were wearing like shorts in a t-shirt and i was in a north face puffer jacket so i'm like how do we have such a disconnect because i'm freezing and you're evidently warm enough that you're in shorts and a, a, a thing so i put on this 
um and hopefully i won't be too cold i'm leaving on this tank top because i like this tank top i feel like it's very flattering i got this from halara it's really cute like i probably would want to get this in like different colors my white fox jeans on and then this zip up i believe is from i got this from like plt like five years ago so it, they definitely don't sell it anymore why okay i'm just like procrastinating because like i'm hoping that it that it has common sense and it went back out the window but if it didn't go back out the window y'all update on the quiz i didn't take the uh black history quiz because he basically he lectured for the entire class and then he said okay the quiz will be posted but you have until 11:59 tonight to do it i was like i'm not doing it right now i'm probably gonna do it after my computer class and get it done there like how am i gonna get my stuff like i wish i could have recorded it for you guys i literally saw it just fall into my room and it's i need to show you like how big it is like i need something that's like equivalent to its size okay this okay look at this it's like the size of like one of these but like a little bit longer like it's a full b came outside so i could get the other angle okay because this is where it came in from and there it is there it is it's on my jacket why won't it leave bro like come 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 i don't want to just leave it in there guys this is not guys this is not guys this is not okay this is not i'm not mentally well right now okay don't crawl to my computer she's making it okay okay come on fly out she keeps trying to fly out and she's not flying out she's like almost making it no oh, she's she's coming out 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 fuck 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 yes okay guys i got my room back <laughs> and now i can pack my bag but i feel kind of violated because that bee was just walking up and down on all of my stuff so my room is back to being mine i like so like with my apartment the windows obviously they don't have mesh which I, that's like a very interesting choice i don't understand that choice it's an interesting choice but now this is like i immediately want to ask them to like how they install a mesh because like bro this is only the beginning of the warm weather and it's only like 60 something degrees but my room is south facing so it gets lots of sun and then it's small so it's like it just heats up really fast and if i can't open my window to get a little breeze because i'm afraid of miss bumblebee coming in to take my territory this ain't gonna work so i'm gonna need to ask them So now you're sitting on my brother's what is this a ps4 ps3 i don't know ps4 i don't know that's what you're sitting on came to my mom's house because one of the cats which is like my brother's cat his name is kimchi and he had a little incident where like he had like a cut on his foot so we had to take him to the hospital, this whole thing. Give him like antibiotics and all this stuff that we have to like put in his food just to make sure he's good. And then they gave him a cone. So I'm here because I have to make sure I feed him his antibiotics. They gave him like a cat cone and I don't know if you've seen like animal cones, like those plastic cones that they give you when like your pet isn't supposed to like groom themselves or like lick at their wound. And it just looks like, it just it just doesn't look like a good vibe. And he was like really not vibing with it. Like obviously no animal vibes with it. I just always feel so bad. So I went on Amazon and I got him this. So this will be interesting to try to get on him by myself because he's a runner. Where did he go? He was just here. I gotta let Lucy out. Say hi, Lucy. 
Lucy's here. Oh, there he is. Okay, kimchi. They're not supposed to fight because that was the whole issue. They don't fight, they just play and they play really rough. Hi, kimchi. Hi. There we go. Good boy. Thank you. Can you breathe? Let me know. But I don't want it to come off, okay? Can you breathe fine? I got it on him. So, let's see. I made sure it wasn't too tight. But yeah, it's basically supposed to be able to stop him from getting to his foot. Obviously, he, it's not like an enjoyable experience. But I feel like it's already much better than the big plastic cone they put on him because I just hate those those plastic cones make no sense like first of all they make them opaque is that is that the right term they make them like they can't see through them and a cat loves their peripheral vision like they they're always on edge they like to know their surroundings so if you put the cone on them they can't see through their peripheral vision so he like was struggling to walk because he like couldn't see properly and like he kept falling off of things because he couldn't you know where'd he go Oh, there he is. I probably should tighten it slightly more because I see it falling to the back, which means it's like not that tight. I let him out because they told us to like keep him, you know, sequestered since the whole issue was him and Lucy play fighting so rough that Lucy probably accidentally scratched him is what the, doc the, the veterinarian said. Um, so you're supposed to keep him sequestered, but again, it just feels a little bit abusive. Like, we've been keeping him sequestered when we're not there to monitor, but since I'm here, there's no point in him being locked in the room. I do have to do that quiz, <laughs> and I don't want to procrastinate all the way to the end of the day, but like, I think I'm going to do that when I get back home. Like, I think when I get back home. I'm not going to get home too late. I'm going to get home probably like in another three hours or so. So I'll do that then. But honestly, this was my first time going. Okay, so like what? Nobody cares, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this as short as possible. So basically, so like we see him. It was like the middle of the night, or not middle of the night. It was probably like eight o'clock. We see him. My mom is like, he's limping. What's going on with that? And I'm like, okay, calm down. Like he's probably just being dramatic, cause like he's always like a little bit dramatic. And then I look at him. And I'm like, oh no, he he's bleeding. He's bleeding. We should probably figure this out. Obviously, it's past five o'clock, and it was also a Sunday. So it was like none of our animal doctor veterinarian places that we normally go to were open. It was like, oh my God, we gotta go to an animal hospital. At first it was like going back and forth. It was like, do we go, do we not go, do we go, do we not go? Because like, I've never been to an animal hospital before. If I knew what occurs at an animal hospital, I probably would not have gone. Because like animals can't communicate what's wrong and they can't communicate their feelings. All they can do is freaking like, ow, Lucy, ow. Lucy, can you, Lucy. Like you could stay here, but like they need to, like I had it set up, okay? Like, can you, like I had a set up. Oh, and she's walking away, okay. I get anxiety about stuff happening to my pets because they can't tell me what's wrong. All they're doing is crying. And realistically, it's the same cries that they do when they're hungry, but I'm just like, okay, but like something's actually happening and all they're doing is like crying, crying, crying. And I'm like, I don't know, like, I don't know. Like, it's not like humans where it's like, if a if a child cuts their leg, you could just be like, okay, slap a bandaid on it. We'll go to the doctor when we go to the doctor. This is different. So I was getting anxiety because I'm like, I don't wanna like universe forbid, we don't take him to the hospital. We take him to the hospital in the morning and like we find out something really bad happens because we waited. I've always just that had that in my mind. Like I always hate like waiting and then you go to the doctor and they're like, oh, well it, it all could have been fine if you came in five hours ago. I don't, so I always just like to nip stuff in the butt. But realistically, like, I just wanted somebody to answer a question. So at first I called the animal hospital and I was like, hi, like, which is like stupid of me because I'm like, what did I expect them to say? I called the animal hospital and I was like, hi, I think my cat's paw is bleeding. He probably is scratched or his nail maybe fell off. I don't really know. I can't really get a good look. What do you suggest we do? And they were like, of course. Oh, well, you should come in. Now, here's my thing. Here's my thing. And this was my ignorance. But now that I know, I will, I will be following suit for the future i thought that because i knew it was minor because he was chilling like you know what i'm saying like he was chilling he was just clearly in pain on his foot i knew it was nothing crazy but i just thought okay i thought like you go to the animal hospital go to the animal hospital i thought i could just lift up his paw show it to somebody and somebody would be like oh no he's fine just take him to your regular veterinarian tomorrow like he'll be fine like he's okay you really don't need to be here i thought somebody would say that i thought somebody would just i thought it would be an in and out five minutes 
and somebody would just be like no realistically like this is like a minor issue he's good for another 10 hours well 24 hours like he's fine that's what i thought was gonna occur that's not what occurred they like signed us in and then they took him and they took him somewhere somewhere else away from us and then we were waiting for four hours and i'm like i know damn well it wasn't a four hour issue it, it just it frustrated me because i also feel this way about like regular doctors where sometimes i feel like doctors my at least the doctors that i've experienced obviously i'm not generalizing because i know these people are humans at the end of the day but i've experienced i've had like negative experiences where like i ask a doctor a question that i feel like should get a straightforward response but then they give me a runaround and i feel like they just want to keep getting tests and like medical stuff out of me when i'm like but i just asked you if two plus two is four and now you're telling me, well, we should probably set up a function and we should probably set up an equation and and get a calculator to just ensure. And, you know, like I just I feel like there's not a good place to go to get direct medical answers. I just feel like there's not a good place to go for pets or for humans. So anyways, that was my commentary. <laughs> morning i think i have like basically an hour like an hour and 15 minutes until i have to leave for my screenwriting class and that's good because i just finished my assignment that i have to do basically when i got home last night i was really hungry so i made my shrimp tacos and then after i made my shrimp tacos i fell down a tiktok rabbit hole and then i got out of my tiktok rabbit hole took a shower i got out of the shower and it was like 10 40 and i was like shoot i never took my black history quiz so I was like, oh shoot. But I was like, luckily it's not 11.59. He had it up until 11.59 and it's only 10 questions. So I immediately went to take it. I had my notes and everything and I took it. We were able to get our grade back immediately because that one like Blackboard just graded it. So I got an 100 on that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I try. Marketing group chat was just posting saying that she put our grades up for a midterm and I was here thinking that it was gonna take like a week, you know, cause it's a lot of us. So my grade for my marketing midterm was an 100 out of 102, which I'm not really understanding what the 102 is. Apparently she added two extra points is what people are saying. Like, I guess I got an 100, but like, because it's 100 out of 102, that means I didn't get 102. So I guess that means I got two questions wrong or no, one question wrong, I'm confused. I'm confused on how that works. We did good. We did good. Two quizzes, I mean two tests, one quiz and a midterm. We did good. For my assignment that I think I was telling you about a little bit in the beginning of this video, but basically it was like a treatment. So for our screenwriting class, like I said, we're doing the feature length films. So this was kind of like trying to flesh out more of our concept for our feature length film and it had to be five to 14 pages and I wrote seven pages. And this one was like breaking it up into chapters. Do I have it? She posted the worksheet and the worksheet kind of looked like this, where she was kind of like splitting it up into the three act story structure, which is like the traditional story structure for feature length films. And it was breaking those three acts into like smaller chapters so that you could kind of get a sense of the like proper arc of your story and the major midpoints, all is lost points, uh, the climax, crisis, resolution. 
So basically the treatment was supposed to be fleshing all of those things out and making sure you hit all of those points. I never really explained my feature film idea for you. I'm like really proud of myself because I've always felt like I had this roadblock where when I create stories, I always like tell myself, I'm like, oh, I can't make a middle. I can see the beginning and I can see the ending. It's hard for me sometimes to see the middle but I think that's because everything that I've been writing I've been like overthinking in a sense because I've been writing it with the intent of like trying to make it like a novel I feel like I just put a lot more pressure on myself when I do that versus this which is like a school assignment I'm thinking about it as a school assignment where there's like no expectations no expectations for it to even be good like good the only people that are seeing it are my classmates and my peers so I kind of just like let it flow and I'm pretty proud of what I came up with and I came up with like a full flesh story which is like this is the first time that I've created a fully fleshed out story in the literal probably 15 years that I've been writing multiple like story ideas and I've never completed one act one act two act three it's like a period piece is that what it's called I don't know 1800s basically it's basically following this 17 year old girl themes of it it's a lesbian love story with Salem witch ancestry, witchcraft, magic, and basically like female rage. And that's the vibe. My inspirations for it were this song, A History of Man by, who is that by? By Maisie Peters, Little Women, the latest version. The version with Florence Pugh, that version, and the Barbie movie. Those were like my three inspirations and those are like the three vibes of this kind of script the barbie movie specifically with like the feminist messaging because i wanted this to kind of be like a feminist film but a very like raw type of feminist film and i know a lot of people don't like to describe the barbie movie as a feminist film honestly like i don't understand the blatant hate that the barbie movie gets because i thought it was a 10 out of 10 is it my favorite movie of all time no because nothing is iron man one iron man one will always be my favorite movie of all time but i thought it was a great movie and i thought like I thought it was well executed. I thought it was great. I do think it deserved some Oscars. I feel like it got snubbed and I'm a little bit annoyed by that. I don't know. I know a lot of people feel like it was like juvenile and like the themes of feminism were like pretty surface level, but I don't know. Like this is why art is subjective and this is why it's like as long as it impacts some people, that's all that matters. I feel like a film is good if I walk out of it feeling seen or feeling understood or feeling empathetic and I walked out of Barbie feeling seen like yes the themes of feminism that were in Barbie were things that like I've been hearing since I was 10. For me personally it's just always good to hear and it's always good to feel validated no matter how constantly validated you are. It doesn't matter how many times you hear it it's just sometimes you just need to hear it and sometimes it just feels good to hear it like it was a nice feel good feminist movie that made me not feel alone it made me feel comforted all of the good things i'm not a barbie hater i'm definitely i'm i mean i'm i don't i wouldn't say i was a stan but i really loved it i really loved it and i will stand by that i don't think that makes that means i have terrible taste in movies it just made me feel something so that was good so i wanted to like create something inspired from that and inspired from like that feeling of like feeling seen so i wanted to take my own like raw feelings with being a woman in like a different way because I feel like I have a lot of this like pent up rage a lot of the time when I write stuff that's like has to do with feminism it's got a lot of rage to it just because I got a lot of rage I got a lot of anger and this is my only way to like get it out in a legal manner where like I can literally have a character like burn everything to the ground because that's what I want to do but I can't actually do that without going to jail for arson so it's like you just have someone else do that one of the most important lines to me was one of my characters says do not ever let them tell you this world was not made for you that your happiness is secondary to their wants make them hear you and know you make them fear you the way they've always made us fear them and when you are fearless without it give this power to another woman who needs it these seven pages are what I'm gonna present to class in the next few hours and basically like we present it we read it and then we get feedback from like the room and I really enjoy I like always look forward to going to my screenwriting class a it's just fun to I love hearing everybody else's ideas I love hearing like how other people's brains work for like storytelling also I just this is like the only class that I have like actual like acquaintances and like slight friends in because it's like my major class so like i've seen these people for like a good year year and a half 